Hello friends, happy, what day is today? Today is Friday. Happy Friday, hope your day is going great. Sorry, I'm having issues with my phone. Um, let's get to it. So, yesterday I was not able to go live, sorry about that. Um, but today we're actually going to be finishing up um, our section here in the book that we're going through, Essential Truths of the Christian Faith by R.C. Sproul. And we started the section on the church and the sacraments. Um, and today's uh, uh, study is going to be, or what we're going to talk about today's chapter, is chapter 85. And it talks about oaths and vows. And what does that mean? Um, and why, as the body of Christ, the church, we ought to have, or why we have oaths and vows, um, and the different types that we have. Uh, so, yeah, let's get to it. I'm going to start reading here. Um, this is R.C. Sproul speaking, not me, because I'm reading off of his book, obviously. It says, As a boy, I heard the fable, or the fable, fable, <laughs> account of George Washington and the cherry tree. I have never heard of it, but. When young George was confronted by his distressed father concerning the wanton destruction of a cherry tree, the boy said, I cannot tell a lie. I cut down the tree. That's what George Washington said. I have never heard that phrase in my life, but he said it apparently. It took me years to figure out that Washington's confession was in fact a lie. To say I cannot tell a lie is to lie about one's ability to lie. Um, and I've heard this, like people say, oh, I, I'm, I'm, I, I'm not a liar. And that's not true because we see in scripture that we are, we all are liars. Okay. There were many things George Washington could not do. He could not fly. He could not be in more than one place at the same time, etc. But George Washington could tell a lie. He was a man. All human beings are capable of telling lies. Scripture declares that all men are liars. This we see in Psalms 116 verse 11. It says all men, all men are liars and women because we are men including men and women. Um, this does not mean that everyone lies all the time. Okay, it doesn't mean that everything that I say is a lie. Um, we also have the ability to tell the truth. All right, so we have the ability to tell the truth, um, but we don't have the ability to not lie because we do. Okay. We also have the ability to tell the truth. Sorry, I just said that. The problem arises when we are called upon to trust someone's word and we do not know for sure if he is telling the truth, right? And we all know it because um, even nowadays we say, well, I'm not perfect. You know, if you ask someone, have you lied? Uh, you know, I haven't completely said the truth. Or maybe people say, well, I've said a white lie. Or even honestly, just looking at myself, I do lie. Obviously, I'm human. Um, but I feel like a lot of times I lie not just with my words, but maybe with my actions and things that I presume, you know. Um, and yeah, so we do. We have the ability to lie, okay? To emphasize, so now, now we're talking about just the ability to trust, you know what I'm saying, that since we know that everybody can lie, what do we do about trusting serious things that, you know, we need honesty in, Okay. Um, to emphasize the importance of truth and making of promises and the giving of important testimonies, we resort to the swearing of oaths and vows, which is what we're talking about today. So in situations where you require 100% honesty, um, for example, in testimonies, right, uh, or giving promises, and the biggest promise I can think of right now um, is like our wedding vows, right? Because when we say, um, till death do us part, um, when we say uh, through rich or poor, through whatever, thick or thin, is that even a vow? <laughs> I'm not sure if thick or thin is in there. Anyways, those are vows um, and we need to be trustworthy, okay? Even now we see nowadays that there's just so many people that do those vows and break them, but you know, it leads to that. We need oaths and vows so that we um, hold each other accountable to these situations are a big deal, okay? Before offering testimony in a court, the witness is sworn in, right? He or she promises to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help me God. And I love that last statement, so help me God, because we use it even nowadays. In 2019, it's been used for years, decades, um, and we still use it today. And uh, it, it's great that we still see, well, maybe it's just custom now that we do it, but I love how in the beginning that was a big deal, that it was, you know, God was involved in that sense. And we're going to see why. In the vow, appeal is made to God and to God alone as the supreme witness of the statement. 
okay? He himself is the fountainhead of all truth and is incapable of lying. God cannot lie. Lie is a sin. God cannot be where sin is. Um, and he is 100% honest, truthful. And we see this in scripture. I believe it's in the book of Proverbs says, every word God says is proven truth, okay? Um, okay, what is false about George Washington that like we talked about that he says, I cannot lie, um, is true about God. He cannot lie. We see this in Titus 1, 2 and Hebrews 6, 17 to 18. Neither can God abide with liars. He warns against taking rash or false vowels, um, which we do, we do all the time, you know, even nowadays, like I said, with marriage and how people say, um, you know, I vow to to love you till death to us part etc and you see it so many times people just don't take it seriously they're just oh well, sure let's let's just see and they don't really see um why why right away the consequences that it might bring and let me tell you that's why there is so much consequences even people who don't love the lord and break these vowels um they still you know have a test that divorce is just awful you know it really causes so much pain Okay, so neither can God abide with lies. She said that he warned against taking rash or false vows. Pay what you have vowed. Be better not to vow than to vow and not pay. This you see in Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes chapter 5 verses 4 to 5. Um, where God's saying, whatever you have vowed to pay, pay it. Meaning, whatever you have said that you're going to do, do it. You know, it's better that you say you don't say you're going to do it and don't do it. Um, then say you are going to do it and not do it. And um, I'm kind of like struggling with this or I feel like I've been struggling with it my whole life um, in the sense of maybe just like my Hispanic culture. I feel like um, I have a lot of like, you know, friends that are Hispanics, etc. Maybe it's maybe it's not Hispanic. Maybe it's just like people here in South Florida. I don't know. But my thing is that a lot of times it's like that. Like I, somebody says, hey, yes, let's do something. Or, hey, no, I'm, you know, hey, yeah, I'm going to go. Hey, I'll meet you there. Hey, I got this. I'll get this for you or whatever. And then they don't do it, you know. And for me, I don't know. I take that like personally. Maybe I shouldn't. Um, but maybe because it's in scripture that we are called to be honest, especially in the body of Christ. Um because we follow a God who is honest and we are called to be holy as he is holy. And that is a part of the journey, honesty, you know? So um, I don't know, that's even just kind of what I'm struggling with. And I'm not saying I never do it, you know what I'm saying? But I feel like it's very prominent. Like it's just known. People are like, well, you know, if this person says they're going to do something, they may not do it. And that's so sad, you know? Um, our word should be valid. Uh, and later on, we're going to see that our yes should be yes and our no should be no. But more specifically, we're talking about vows here. That when we say we're going to do something, we are supposed to be held accountable. We are supposed to, that's supposed to be so um, important to us that our word is good. Our vow, that's, you know, our vows and our oaths. Okay. So that's why God says, you know, pay what you have vowed. But vowed before, um, better not to vow than to vow not pay. Um, and so much so that God wants us to be so honest that it's also in the Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments include a law against bearing false witness. This you see in Exodus 20, um, verse 16. Since our entire relationship to God is based upon covenant promises that we see throughout Scripture in the Old Testament and the New Testament, the G, the, for example, God said, Hey, this Messiah is going to come and it's going to, you know, pay or be the atoning sacrifice for your sins. That is telling you that he said and it came to pass. This is why we have so much faith in the God that we serve, that we see his trajectory. We see the past that he has claimed that he's going to do something and he has done it. So our trust, our faith is in him. Okay. So again, since our entire relationship to God is based upon covenant promises, God sanctifies the matter of vows, oaths, and promises. They're a big deal to him, right? And he is true to that. Trust in human relationships such as marriage and also business agreements is necessary for the welfare of society, okay? A lawful oath is a part of worship wherein people seek, um, seeking to assure the veracity of what they speak Call upon God as witness of what they assert and promise. The implication is that if those taking oaths are found to be lying, God will punish them with swiftness and severity. Okay, this is why when we go to court, we raise right, raise your right hand. This is my left foot. 
raise your right hand. You know, um, I, you know, promise or swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, the truth, so help me God. Those, that last phrase is, if I'm not telling the truth, then condemnation should come my way. Um, and I feel like people get away with it and people I'm sure are dishonest sometimes, uh, but because we don't see the immediate reflection of our sins of that, of the, the, uh, um, of us breaking that oath, we think it's fine. We just think, oh, well, God just, you know, didn't look at that situation or was busy doing something else or just missed me, you know, not holding to that vow. Um, but we, we know that every sin will be accounted for. That's what the Bible says. Um, everything will be judged in that says you see this in the book of Ecclesiastes the very last chapter the very I think almost either the last verse or the second to last verse it says that everything will be judged everything that we do um, and even though judgment is not coming right away um, there will be a time when we will face God for all of our everything that we have done and um, and for us or not us well yeah well humans that don't um, that lie and are not true to the oaths and the vows then their reward is coming and not in a good way. <laughs> All right. Um, let's see. In addition to stipulation is that an oath should not be made with equivoc equ equivocation or mental uh, reservation. Meaning God does not accept crossed fingers, but expects honesty. So whenever we do do an oath or something, you know, like you've seen it in movies where they like cross their fingers and they're like, is it this way? They cross their finger like, okay, yes, I promise I'm going to do something. And then like they cross their fingers like, I really don't. That's not what God wants either because that is still lying, okay? An oath is not to be taken lightly. It should be saved for solemn occasions, for solemn promises. So oaths and vows um, are held to a, a higher um, standard more uh, or more accountable to them. They're a big, big deal. So that's why we shouldn't use them for everything. Like I'm gonna be like, I vow that I'm gonna, I don't know, um, meet you tomorrow at seven. Like that, that's using a vow wrongly. You know, like first of all, our yes should be yes, or no should be a no. But we should save those vows that we are um, saying that we're okay. We're gonna be held accountable to for big things like marriage, you know, and like it says here, like business contracts. And that is what the church should be known for, that we hold those things accountable. Um, that's why even just like in marriage counseling, when there is divorce or whenever two, a couple wants a divorce, the church should be there to say, hey, we were there, you know, when you said I do, we are holding you accountable. Like this is a big deal for you to break this oath. That is what we should be known for, okay? Um, not the only thing we should be known for, but just honesty. Okay, so even governments, um, government recognizes this in insisting an oath for weddings and before giving of legal testimony. Um, even in less solemn instances, moreover, a believer is called to be honest. Um, that once yes be yes and once no be no. Okay, that is the responsibility of a faithful disciple of Christ. So true. You know, um, doesn't doesn't mean that we're just never ever gonna lie, but we need to lie less. We need to be so. Um, our goal is to be holy. So our goal is to be, you know, truthful at all times, regardless of the consequence. God asked of that. He expect expects that of us. It's one of the commandments, um, and um, it's what we are called to to be Christians. Okay. So that's it. That is the last chapter in this um, church and sacraments chapter or section in this book. Let me go through the summary statements. Number one, human beings have a capacity for telling lies. Two, God, the source of truth, source of truth cannot lie and is the guardian of truth. Um, three, oaths and vows are a lawful part of worship. Okay, we worship God and honor him for who he is by being truthful to or being... Um, how do you say? Yeah, holding our vows and our truth and our and our oaths. Oaths should be sworn by God alone, because He's the only one who is a hundred percent honest and could hold somebody accountable. No creature can be the ultimate witness of truth. And five vows should not be made rashly or with reservations. When we do them, we are to be held accountable. We are to be honest and saying, "I will, to the best of my ability, in everything that I am." Uh, be held to this statement or this um, act that I'm doing, okay? All right, and the biblical passages to reflect on are Deuteronomy 10, 20, uh, 2 Chronicles 6, chapter chapter 6, verses 22 to 23, Ezra 10, 5, Matthew 5, 
33 to 37 and James 5 12 okay so that concludes our section like I said on the church uh, and sacraments and on Monday hopefully Lord willing we're gonna start uh, the second to last section of this book I can't believe we're finishing up this book has a hundred and something a hundred and two hundred and 102 chapters, I think. Um, and we are going to be starting spirituality and living in this age. Okay? All right, guys. That's about it. Have an amazing day. And I will see you guys later or Monday. Bye.